This is QTV News. I am Mumudu Gajaga and thanks for joining us. First, the main local, international, business and sports news headlines. In the local news, with a high rate of unemployment, more than 150 youth in Basse are on the brink of losing their jobs as the use of motorcycle taxi is banned by police. The Ministry of Health received vehicles and medical equipment worth $10 million to assist the Gambia's preparedness in dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. In observance of the holy month of Lent, the Fatumatoba Baro Foundation extends relief service to the Gambian Christian community. And transforming the Gambia's healthcare delivery system, we hear about an initiative by the Ministry of Health and Partners. In business news, the Gambia Competition and Consumer Protection Commission and Partners commemorated World Consumer Rights Day on the theme Sustainable Consumption. Those were our main headlines and now the news in detail. Thanks for joining us. Welcome and thank you for joining us. This is QTV News. More than 150 youth who depend on motorbikes for their business and survival in Basse have been banned by the police. As QTV's Mahmoud Lamin Choi reports, the youths fear being unemployed and unable to feed their families. It is normally the busy roads in Basse where motorbikes are used as taxis in every corner of the town and its neighboring communities. Such a ride-hailing commercial venture has been a source of employment and income for some youth in this part of the country. However, the police have banned the trade, labeling the commercial venture illegal. The Gambia government assigned the youth not to go to Barkway. Let's work here, invest here, and we can have anything we want to have here. But there is no employment for the youths, and we occur our own self-employment, that is this motorbike taxi. They, so, they say no to that. This is the only business these young people rely on for income and family upkeep. And they have told QTV that stopping them from operating their motorbikes as taxis means stopping their livelihood. I stopped school at grade 11 at Nasir Ahmadiyya Muslim Senior Secondary School. So the death of my father make me not to complete my school. So here right now, I'm a family man, I'm a responsibility person. It's here where I'm surviving this taxi machine. More than 150 youth are likely to lose their livelihood in a country where youth unemployment is high. Some of them told QTV that even though they possess skills in other jobs, they can only find comfort and a decent income in this business to feed themselves and their families. I'm having a wife with kids, I'm having two twins with my wife with two children, you know, I'm the one feeding them. Though I'm with my skills, but my skills is not functioning as expected. At least 11 of these youth are migrant returnees. Upon return from their migration journeys, some of them benefited from reintegration packages by RM to start a new and progressive life in society. Ibrahim Akebe is one returnee who bought a motorcycle to operate as a taxi. He is extremely disappointed. We were the deport from IOM and RT, but we know it $60, when IOM facilitated my return to the Gambia from Libya, I was given $60,000 for reintegration. From it, I bought a motorbike to start a business. The motorcycle taxi has been going on fine, and I was inspired to stay in my country and work. We want the authorities to find a solution to this problem. They now operate under the police radar, beating traffic checkpoints to carry on business. However, some do land in the police net, thereby leading to prosecutions and court fines. The angry and disappointed youth have also pointed accusing fingers at the commissioner and his men for allegedly receiving bribes from them when caught in the traffic. It's the commissioner who received the money. The, when they bring a motorcycle to the uh, police line, it's the commissioner who received the money. Have you ever given cash to the commissioner of police? No, I have never given cash to the commissioner, but when we come for a motorcycle, his, his boys normally say that he's the commissioner who is going to really pay this and you go. Behind me are a group of young people who are employed in the motor taxi business. But this business has really been proving difficult for them because authorities have been saying no. And we will find out why. Omar Dabo, police commissioner in Basse, who refused the bribery allegations, confirms the ban, saying it only affects motorcycles that are used for commercial purposes. He argues that no motorcycles are licensed to operate as a taxi and that using them as such is not recognized by law. The commissioner informs QTV about the progress he and his men have been making to enforce the ban. 
uh, our action in this direction is that we, we, we go out and uh, do a raid on them. All the time we do a raid on them. When we get them in the raid, we um, uh, put them before the court. We ensure yes. that they are charged um, with the relevant charge and uh, they are put before the court. Then the court takes it, its decision. The police commissioner accused the youth involved in motorcycle taxi of being disorderly, including community disturbance, smuggling of criminals and causing most traffic accidents in Basse. The commissioner also emphasized that though the police are concerned about the plight of the youth, their priority is law enforcement. These people, they transport criminals into URR and transport them out of URR because they have, uh, most of them, as I said, are Gambians, they have telephone numbers of some of the criminals and they call them when they do one or two things. They pick them out, get them out of the country quickly and then uh, bring, or bring them into the country quickly. This is what do you say in response to some of the allegations. Last time I even discussed that with some of the officers. I tell them we are Gambians. Give us chance to walk. During this walk, we can able to trace the bad, the criminals, the rebels, or whoever you, you know that is ready to do bad in this country. The motor taxi business is not a pleasant thing for taxi drivers. By Lamin Jauni, the chief garage of Gambisara tells QTV that the motorcycle taxis would intrude into their garage to pick up their customers. The chief of garage added that he is not calling for a ban on the motor taxis, but he would shed no tears if their business is wiped out in Basse. These young people, however, are still in need of a solution to the problem and of viable, gainful employment. But dialogue with local authorities for a business alternative have not still yielded results and appear no nearer to doing so. I'm with QTV News. Vehicles and medical equipment worth $10 million were presented on Tuesday to the Ministry of Health by the People's Republic of China. The donation is to assist the Gambia's preparedness in dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. Babu Kersi attended the event and he now reports. According to China's Ambassador Ma Xianxiong, the donated vehicles and medical equipment are to help Gambia prepare and put in place measures to fight the corona disease, even though there are no cases reported yet in the Gambia. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, Mohamed Lamin Jaite, thanked the donors and stressed the Gambia's readiness to fight against the deadly disease. We have witnessed countless number of such presentations by the Embassy of the Republic of China in Banjul to the government of the Gambia and especially to the Ministry of Health. This particular occasion is special in the sense that we are braced up in the fight against the prevention of a global disease that has just emerged and the entire world is working towards its prevention the chairman of the National Assembly Select Committee on Health, Usman Silla, praised the People's Republic of China for its continuous support to Gambia. China has one, once again done it in coming to the aid of Gambia. This is one of the many interventions, particularly to the health sector, from the Chinese government. Ambassador Ma Xiangxun said the donated items are very expensive and worth the fight against the coronavirus. And the Gambia government is also working on preventing the coronavirus from entering into the country. At this critical moment, as the Gambia sincere friend and partner, China decided to provide this batch of medical, uh, medical donation. I believe this reflects the valuable brotherly ties between our two governments and the people, both of our countries. The Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmadou Lamin Samate, said the country has recognized China's effort in contributing towards the country's development. Ambassador Ma, we want to reassure you that these vehicles will be put to very, very good use. They will not be abused. They will be maintained well. Ourselves will monitor the welfare of these vehicles on a weekly basis to make sure that they don't even have scratches. We appreciate this gesture 
this will go a long 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 way to provide quality services for our people and we have seen your passion your commitment your dedication to the people of this country once again thank you very much yeah. Reports on the coronavirus as of 10th of March indicate that 10 African countries have now reported the case, Burkina Faso being the latest. Globally, over 114,000 cases of coronavirus or COVID-19 have been confirmed, and it has been confirmed that every country in the European Union has reported cases of the disease. Babu Karsi, QTV News. The Fatima Taba Barrow Foundation on Monday presented food items to the Christian community in observance of the Holy Month of Lent. Amadou Oba attended the ceremony and he now reports. The First Ladies Foundation has a mission to bring relief services and empower vulnerable and disadvantaged people. The donated food items were 200 bags of rice and 100 gallons of oil. Fatou Sise, Chief Executive Officer and the Vice Chairperson of FAB Foundation, says the donation is part of the foundation's efforts to support underprivileged and vulnerable communities in the country. Uh, her office and the foundation have this uh, grand gesture to support the Christian community for the period of the fasting month for them. They call it Lent. Uh, for the Lent uh, period, she, uh, Her Excellency and her foundation have donated to the Christian Council for the Christian community in this country 200 bags of rice and 120 litre gallons of uh, oil to support the Christian community in this noble month of fasting. We have requested for the Christian Council to continue their prayers that they do for the community, for the Gambian community, for peace, stability of this country, and um, uh, to see this country go further. Reverend Rodney Louis Prom, the General Secretary, Gambia Christian Council, thanked the First Ladies Foundation and described the donation as timely and worthy. On behalf of the Chair of Gambia Christian Council, Bishop Odiko, and on behalf of the other bishops, Bishop Gabriel Mendy and presiding Bishop Hannah Falheim, and on behalf of the executive of Christian Council and all the Christian community, we want to express our gratitude to the First Lady and to her foundation for this kind gesture during this period. It is a very, very good initiative, and we want to thank her and continue to assure her of our prayers and continue to assure the people of the Gambia, especially the Christian community, that this gesture will go a long way in helping especially the less fortunate and those among us who would need it very, very much. Reverend Louis Prom adds that the food items will be distributed across vulnerable churches and communities while urging Gambians to safeguard the peace and stability of the country through prayer. For QTV News, I am Amadi Oba. The University of the Gambia Science Students Association, in collaboration with the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission, on Monday began commemorating Science Week. Ami Taylor attended the ceremony and seen our files in this report. The theme for the week-long event is revolutionizing science in the society to mitigate contemporary issues. The annual commemoration of Science Week also incorporated the celebration of International Women's Day under the sub-theme Women Role Models. At the opening ceremony, Dr. Ramatulain Jai, a medical and scientific doctor at Medical Research Council The Gambia, in her statement discussed the most prominent diseases affecting Gambians and the measures being taken to fight them. Some of you uh, will know about the cancer research that we've been doing at the MRC. Uh, some of you will know about the role of hepatitis B virus, which affects one in 10 Gambian adults uh, in the Gambia. And the role of aflatoxin, which is a poison that is produced by infected groundnuts. This is what motivated me to come back to do something about it. We have screened over 15,000 Gambians in the West Coast region, and it confirmed that one in 10 are infected. Speaking on this year's theme and sub-theme, Dr. Ramatulai Jai explained the importance of the sciences in society and the implementation of scientific methods to solve society's problems and on the need to encourage girls to develop an interest in the sciences. The actual uh, use of scientific methods to try and inculcate scientific thinking in our population and to use science 
to actually solve our problems. Um, science can be used to solve so many problems. Caleb Muifong, a Commonwealth Scholarship alumnus, stated the role of the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission in contributing towards the achievement of the goals of the two themes. It's been an honor for us to be able to host this event today and to make sure that the women but also the young men in our society recognize the, the, the potential and the benefit that there would be to associating more women into leadership positions in all uh, the spheres of our society to attain the sustainable development goals that the UN has set for 2030. As part of the celebration, a free health check exercise was conducted on volunteers to know their blood group, sugar level, and body mass index. Mohamed Haidara, the chairman of Biologic Club of Science Students Association, explained the importance of knowing one's health status. Blood grouping and sugar testing and BMI, body mass index, these are so important for like uh, individuals to know about, like our volunteers to let them know about their obesity and also their sugar level and also to know about which blood group do they belong to. Because that has become uh, so many cases in the society today. Many people do not know their blood group, either know whether their sugar level is getting high or low, or neither know their obesity. This year's themes are geared towards the empowerment of women in science and discussions on the solutions to science problems. Reporting for QTV News, I am Amy Taylor. We will go for a short commercial break and when we come back, we hear about an initiative geared towards transforming the country's healthcare delivery by the Gambia Health Authorities and Partners. Join us after the break for these stories, international business and sports news. Oh yes! QSAL has exhausted the number three series, the 5051, and 53 number series. We are expanding and introducing another new number series starting with 58 and 59. With the 58 and 59 numbers, you can call any QCell number for the same unmet charges. You get the same great service at the exact same charges offered to numbers in the 3, 50, 51, 52, and 53 series. The family is even bigger now. For more information, Call customer care on 111. QSell. We innovate, others follow. Right time, right place, right price. Promote your product, business, and brand to millions of viewers nationwide or across the globe. Call QTV Marketing on 3244444 or email us at marketing at qtv.gm for all your advertisement needs. QTV Gambia, right place. Welcome back and thank you very much for joining us. This is QTV News. Kiptas Gambia Healthcare Providers in partnership with the Ministry of Health recently held the official launch of an initiative geared towards transforming the country's healthcare delivery system. QTV's Antumana Isoinyasi has more details. The launch of this initiative, which is to be piloted in the Kanifing municipality, has been held by the Ministry of Health officials and local government authorities as one that will transform the country's health sector. Kiptas Health and Wellness Consultancy Group is established by a group of Gambian health care providers based in the United States to address the challenges confronting the country's health care delivery systems. Deputizing for the Lord Mayor, Musa Bah, Deputy Mayor of Kanifing Municipality, highlighted the importance of the Kiptas Initiative. He says Kiptas is creating solutions to current health care challenges. It is therefore timely that an organization as, as important as GIPDA is launched in our, in our municipality. The healthcare services that you, you, you will be delivering to our people will go a long way in coping diseases to a certain degree. Sundu Jaju, a member of KIPTAS, explains that among the group's various areas of intervention is the provision of medication management, screening, school health care, ambulance and transition care. Dr. Mustafa Bite, Director of Health Services at the Ministry of Health, says Kiptas is a unique group that is doing a tremendous job in helping government 
meet its national health targets. We once again recognize the great program and for its success it must be integrated with the health sector. If you do a standalone program, it's not linked with the government, it's not linked with the health sector, it's parallel, it, it will not be sustainable, there will be conflicts and uh, you know, the desired outcome that we want to have, we will not have it. So I think we should continue the trajectory you started, that is the discussions and the consultations with all stakeholders, just like you've shown here, so that we can have an all-inclusive package that benefits the country and we all benefit. Speaking on behalf of the group, Dr. Keba Mas says the strategies they have will change primary health care delivery in the Gambia. With a strong focus and implementation of these strategies, the healthcare landscape in the country will be a trendsetter in the subregion and will pave the way for an innovative system that will ensure performance and excellence. Kiptas is a team of experienced and dedicated healthcare professionals with a combined experience of more than 30 years of service working in the most advanced healthcare settings in the world. Although the majority of the group's members are resident in the United States, they also have members in the UK and other parts of Europe. And so is Onyasi for KTV News. And now to business news. The Gambia Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, in collaboration with the Economic and Management Students Association of the University of the Gambia, on Tuesday is gearing up to commemorate the World Consumer Rights Day. The theme for this year's commemoration is sustainable consumption. Aliou Sise has more details. The World Consumer Rights Day, observed on 15 March each year, is used to raise global awareness about consumer rights and needs. The day is also used to demand for respect and protection of consumers' rights, and as well protests against market abuses and social injustices which undermine those rights. World Consumer Rights Day was inspired by former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, who sent a special message to the U.S. Congress on 15 March 1962, in which he formally addressed the issue of consumer rights. The executive secretary of the GCCPC, Amadou Sissé, says the theme of this year is very apt considering changes in consumption patterns. In order to protect the planet, planet and provide fair social conditions for current and future generations, we need to think about the way we produce and consume goods and services. The aim of sustainable consumption is to increase resources, resource efficiency and fair trade while helping to alleviate poverty and enable everyone to enjoy a good quality of life with access to food, water, energy, medicine, and more. We need to raise consumer awareness and understanding of the impact of our choices on the environment. We need to have changes in the consumption choices that we make. And most importantly, we need to sustain it. We need to maintain our behavioral changes. Sustainable consumption is strongly linked to how the environment is managed and protected which falls under the mandate of the National Environmental Agency. Abdul Samad Hydra, Principal Environment Inspector, advocates responsible behavior towards the environment. With regards to consumer protection, I would like to highlight one key thing. That is the ban on plastic bag ban. The order was passed on July 1st, 2015. Moreover, even if it is politically declared, but it is environmentally friendly. And the agency has been advocating for the ban for almost a decade. But then it came into a force on July 1st, 2015. Uh, plastic bags are very harmful to our health, to our environment, which includes the air, the marine, and also the land. Dr. Hamiri Jawara of the School of Business and Public Administration at the UTG says the theme sustainable consumption has a lot to do with sustainable development that does not cause harm to the future generations. So to be able to um, consume in a way right, that has little impact on our environment, uh, it's, it's something, that is, uh, something that is very important. Right? And then we can all uh, participate in this. Yeah? Uh, so I think the multi-stakeholder uh, approach that these people are using, uh, it's, it's, it's quite useful in, in helping us you know, to know what is our, uh, what is our part you know, in making sure that we live in a sustainable planet. The ceremony was also used to celebrate the life and legacy of the late St. Louis, 
who was a social justice advocate and former Red Cross volunteer. Alassane Senghor, Secretary General of the Gambia Red Cross Society, and Modlami Jaite, Secretary General of the Gambia Consumer Protection Consortium, said the late Sake Lewis was a very honest, hardworking, and straightforward person. Reporting for QTV News, I am Ali Usise. And now to the latest sports news. My colleague Ansumana Eso Nyasi is with me in the studio. Eso, what is happening in the latest um, sports news? Well, thank you very much, Gajaga. The Gambia's national senior team coach, Tom Sainfield, has called on the Confederation of African Football to postpone or delay the Gambia's upcoming 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifiers against Gabon, which is scheduled for the 26th and 30th of March, respectively. Well, this is because he risked losing about 30% of his players. Well, of course, about seven Gambia national senior team players ply their trade in Italy, which is Europe's worst affected by the deadly coronavirus. So he is suggesting that F I mean, the Confederation of African Football follows FIFA's guidelines, as they did with the Asian World Cup qualifiers for the 2022 World Cup, and postponed the March and June games. Well, uh, Antoine, does the coach have a genuine excuse to ask the Confederation of Afri African Football, CAF, to um, sort of put a halt to the game until uh, further notice because due to the fears that he may not have all the key players that he need in this game, um, those who are currently playing in Italy, to be able to play for the Gambia? Well, given that, I mean, the Gambia is a small nation and we rely mostly on the players that are playing their trade in Europe. I mean, majority of whom, of our key players, I mean, play their trade in Italy. Of course, like I said earlier, it is Europe's worst affected country by the coronavirus. So there is that fear that if the game should go ahead as planned, I mean, it could disrupt our preparations as he would, I mean, he risk losing majority of his key players and would be left with, I mean, uh, fairly... Um, quite unexperienced players, which, which could, I mean, uh, dampen our chances of, of making it through uh, against Gabon. Um, Ansumana Isuanyasi there with the latest sports news. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's have a quick look at our main news stories. With a high rate of unemployment, more than 150 youth in Basse are on the brink of losing their jobs as the use of motorcycle taxi is banned by the police. The Ministry of Health received vehicles and medical equipment worth $10 million to assist the Gambia's preparedness in dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. In observant of the holy month of Lent, the Fatima Barbaro Foundation extends relief service to the Gambian Christian community. And transforming Gambia's health care delivery system, we heard about an initiative by the Ministry of Health and Partners. In business news, the Gambia Competition and Consumer Protection Commission and partners commemorated World Consumer Rights Day on the theme Sustainable Consumption. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Thank you very much for watching and have a pleasant night.